That's what the children said yesterday here in Missoula. Good morning, everyone. This is Montana Morning for Thursday, March 15th, the Ides of March on 2018. Right now, we have light rain falling in the western Montana area. It's 37 degrees. Of course, that leads to the fact that all roads around the area are barren wet at this time. Our newscast this morning, sponsored by Knife River Residential. Have them install new or repair your home's present asphalt driveway. Plan ahead now for your spring projects by calling 532-5250. Nearly 100 children and parents gathered on the sidewalk outside Paxson Elementary School yesterday, joining thousands of others across the country to speak out against gun violence in schools. Ten-year-old fourth grader Brody explained why he was holding a sign with dozens of his fellow students. To honor the people who have been shot in school and to hope and that there's no more um, shooting and we want this to stop. Brody's mother Libby was literally standing behind her son as he took part in the protest and that they had discussed the walkout at home. And he brought this up yesterday and and kind of touched my heart. He knew exactly what it was about and that he really wanted to be a part of it. And so we had we had a really tough conversation this morning um, about what's happening right now and about this movement and about the legislation that really needs to go through to protect our kids in schools. Another school mom stood with her two children on the sidewalk. Jillian Fetz explained her purpose for taking part in the protest. I am here with my two kiddos who attend Paxton School uh, today in order to show support for the victims of the Parkland shooting last month in Florida and, um, and to also make a show that we are in this together and we all need to protect our kiddos and our kiddos have right to go to school and that supersedes anybody's right to have an AR-15 as far as I'm concerned. At Hamilton High School about 60 students walked across the road to the first Christian church where nearly 80 adults were gathered. Names of the Florida victims were read on a public address system and high school students placed remembrance bows on an evergreen tree. That reported by Steve Fullerton. There were other gatherings throughout the day in Missoula. Another walkout is scheduled for April 20th, the anniversary of the Columbine High School shootings in Colorado. The Montana Legislative Finance Committee met yesterday, met, pardon me, met Monday and Tuesday of this week with an update on the state budget. Committee Chair Nancy Balance of Hamilton said a group of state Democrats came to the meeting asking them to either appropriate money, declare a state of emergency, or to create a supplemental budget allocation to address cuts in mental health services and services for the developmentally disabled. Balance said the committee can't do any of those things. The response from the committee was that if there is an issue... This is because of the cuts the governor made. Governor's the only one who can reverse them. So my suggestion as chairperson was to walk upstairs to the second floor and request it from the governor. I just don't know whether it was a stunt or (laughs) what exactly it was. Balance says many of those making the request were from Missoula, and some had even served in the committee and should have known the committee's limitations. Balance hints that the event may have been an attempt to shift blame for the adverse effect of those budget cuts. Estimates are just exactly that. They're estimates. Unfortunately, we make decisions based on those estimates, and there are real-life consequences to people in Montana, and that's exactly what we're seeing now is real-life consequences that this governor would like to walk away from and point back to the legislature, and that's just not something that can be legitimately done. Balance says revenue is, quote, $4 million to the positive rather than the $137 million in the negative that the governor had projected, end quote, when the special session was called. Balance also says the committee is extremely optimistic after seeing the recent update. Montana's currently eight months through the fiscal year, but the last four months can be extremely volatile, so no one really knows exactly what's going to happen with the state budget. Prosecutors say the discovery of a cell phone entry that appears to reference a murder on Montana's Crow Indian Reservation does not justify a new trial for one of the defendants in the case. The U.S. Attorney's Office disclosed in court documents filed last Friday that the calendar entry includes the name of the victim, Royland Rideshorse, and the statement, quote, I should have told them the truth about what I did, end quote. It's unknown who authored the statement, but prosecutors argue it says nothing about the defendant's actions and would not lead to his acquittal. Attorneys for Defendant DiMarzio, Suede Sanchez, want a new trial. They said last month that the government did not initially reveal the existence of the phone or its contents. Sanchez was convicted of first-degree murder in December. Two co-defendants have also pleaded guilty. At a hearing on Tuesday in Washington, 
Uh, the state of Washington Senator Maria Cantwell asked Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke to explain, since he's advocating for higher admission prices at national parks, why he chose to take a private jet home from Las Vegas. Well, first, insults, innuendos are misleading. I never took a private jet anywhere. I took three trips. One of them was with the senator, your chair, on a prop plane. A second one was with the governor of the Virgin Islands. And the third was to take a King Air to go to, to meet an 8 o'clock in the morning meeting with the governor of, of Montana. Unfazed by Zinke's reply, though, Catwell reiterated her question about the private jet trip to Las Vegas. Mr. Secretary, I've given you ample time, and I simply <laughs> asked you a question about the private jet trip to Vegas. I guess we'll ask you in writing, and maybe we'll get an answer. The IG is looking at this issue, and we're looking at the larger issue of how time and money is spent. And the reason why we are is because of our citizens who want to know why their park fees are going up and they're reading these stories. The hearing was before the U.S. Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. Questions were raised this week about Montana Green Party Senate candidate Tim Adams and whether or not he was actually just a Republican running to split votes away from Democrat John Tester. Green Party State Coordinator Danielle Breck said she spoke with Adams on Tuesday. People have changed their ideals, they change their affiliations, and they should be allowed to do so. That's part of the democracy. I spoke to him yesterday. Everything we talked about aligns with the Green Party ideals. Even if he was on the Republican payroll, that doesn't exclude him from running on another party ticket. I don't feel like he is the hard knocks Republican that the Democrats are wanting to make him out to be. According to Brack, the Democrats' own voter information software shows that uh, Adams isn't as red-ribbed as some might expect. The, the Democrats own ban, the voter access network that they use to determine who is going to lead the Democrat and whose door they should knock on, has him listed as 77 percent leading the Democrat. I don't see where the Democratic Party has any, like, stance to say, oh, no, he's not green. Like, before Monday, there was nobody who was officially green in Montana because the Green Party didn't officially exist in Montana. Green or not, Breck says, candidates will not be endorsed by the party until after the party's convention, expected sometime in late May. Breck said, who used to be a Democrat herself, all candidates from all backgrounds will be vetted at the convention in light of the Green Party platform. Our News Talk time is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. A wintry mix of rain and snow will be possible today. Otherwise, cloudy skies, daytime highs in the mid-40s tonight. Isolated shower threat, overnight lows will drop into the upper 20s. A meteorologist, Brooke Foster, for Missoula's KECI 13.